Thank you, Mr. Vice President, for the kind words and the struggles you have with your son, Bo. Uh, your amazing fight, your determination, dedication for your whole career, your whole life forward of finding a cure for cancer. I am confident in you. One day soon, you will wipe out. First of all, I'd like to thank ESPN for this honor. Jimmy V's inspirational message is on my phone, constant source of encouragement and inspiration. And it's always at my bedside in the hospital, and I can listen to it anytime I want it. So uh, my thoughts are with the Bellotto family. This honor means a great deal to me. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank my two families that are here. You saw their picture first. My beloved bride, Stacy. She is my heaven on earth. In the darkest of moments, tears running down her cheeks, we embrace and we pray. Please. Don't leave me, she played it. We can fight this together. There's no fear in love, and your love is my strength. My children, Casey, Craig, Krista, Riley, Brian, my sister Candy, Stacy's mother, Mary Jo, my battle has been your battle. I would also like to thank my Turner Sports family. Many of them are here tonight. David Levy, Lenny Daniels, Craig Berry, Scooter Bertino, Matt Hong, Nate Smeltz. Your love and support since my first diagnosis has been incredible. And your willingness to adapt, to let me keep doing what I love, is something I will never forget. And the truth is that the Turner family is just part of a bigger family. All of you, a sports family. Sports are who I am in my soul. They have gotten my life. And I have had the good fortune to witness all your amazing feats. And I am confident that I will continue watch those amazing things. I have spent most of the past year and a half at the most impact impactful cancer hospital in the world, MD Anderson in Houston. And many nights I don't get out of the hospital until well after midnight, and I always take the same walking path back to the hotel. The sidewalks wind through a maze of buildings including the Texas Children's Hospital. Many nights, I'll stop, pause, and I'll go inside. A few feet inside the hallway is this large model train display covered by glass. There are seven buttons on the outside. They activate the trains, the circus, the toys, and the trolley. And many nights, alone, in the stillness and solitude of the hospital, I push those buttons, and I watch the trains as they disappear through the tunnel and emerge full steam on the other side. I watch the trains as they pass by the town square, the Dinosaur Canyon, the Pirate's Cove, Santa Land, and the ice skating rink. And I sit there, and I watch, and I listen. I listen to the sounds of the circus, of the kids laughing, and of the train chugging along. Now, I don't know why I am so drawn to this train thing. Perhaps it's my life coming full circle. Maybe it's just the kid inside all of us. Or perhaps it's a few minutes of my life that leukemia cannot take from me. The train actually takes two minutes and 20 seconds to make a full loop. 
But what is time really? When you are diagnosed with a terminal disease like cancer or leukemia, your perception of time changes. When doctors tell you you have three weeks to live, you try to live a lifetime of moments in three weeks, or you say, the hell with three weeks. When doctors tell you that your only hope of survival is 14 straight days of intense chemotherapy, 24 hours a day, you sit there and count down the 336 hours, or you see each day as a blessing. Time is something that cannot be bought. It cannot be wagered with God, and it is not in endless supply. Time is simply how you live your life. I am not an expert on time or on cancer or on life itself. I'm a kid from the small Illinois town of Batavia who grew up on the Chicago Cubs and made sports his life's work although there's never been a day where it actually seemed like work. I have run with the Bulls in Pamplona. I have raced with Mario Andretti in Indianapolis. I have climbed the Great Wall of China. I have jumped out of airplanes over Kansas. I have wrestled gators in Florida. I have sailed the ocean with Ted Turner. I have swam with the oceans in the Caribbean. And I have interviewed Greg Popovich. <laughs> Mid-game, Spurs down seven. <laughs> if I'm learning anything through all of this, it's that each and every day is a canvas waiting to be painted. An opportunity for love, for fun, for living, for learning. To those of you out there, who are suffering from cancer, facing adversity, I want you to know that your will to live and to fight cancer can make all the difference in the world. The way you think influences the way you feel, and the way you feel determines how you act. And to everybody out there, we are making progress. Incredible progress, as the Vice President said, the Moonshot Program. We are going to find a cure for cancer. But we need your help. We must continue to donate. We must continue to fight. We need, must continue to do this together. I am grateful to my parents, Coral and Al. They raised me with a positive outlook on life. I always see the glass half full. I see the beauty in others, and I see the hope for tomorrow. If we don't have hope and faith, we have nothing. Whatever I might have imagined a terminal diagnosis would do to my spirit, it summoned quite the opposite. The greatest appreciation for life itself. So I will never give up, and I will never give in. I will continue to keep fighting, sucking the marrow out of life as life sucks the marrow out of me. I will live my life full of love and full of fun. It's the only way I know how. Thank you. Thank you.